Hey guys, Jessica here, the Fright Family Coach. In today's video, we're talking about feeding our cats, but not necessarily what we should be feeding them. I've talked about that quite a bit, but how we should be feeding our cats and some of the best ways to do that. I have a bunch of options for you in this video, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so let's get right into this video about feeding our cats. Really quickly, I do wanna give a shout out to the Amazon seller who sent me these beautiful ceramic cat dishes. I will have them linked as well as everything else I talk about in this video in the description below. Also, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and check down there at that subscribe button. If it's red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. And that way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. All right, so feeding our cats is not as simple as one may think. There are a few things that I really want you to consider when we think about how to go about feeding our cats. One, that they are natural predators. So hunting for their prey is a very natural instinct for them. So how can we start mimicking that with providing them their meals, right? Another thing I want you to think about is that the way your cat sits and eats off of the ground isn't necessarily the best for digestion and it can really put a strain on your cat's neck and spine. And then, Yet another thing I want you to think about is their whiskers. So if you have never heard of whisper stress, we're gonna talk about that in today's video as well. We're gonna take all of these into account and I'm gonna give you a few options that I know your cat will love. Okay, so the very first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that our cats are hunters. Like they are just natural born hunters and we want to mimic this as closely as we possibly can when feeding our cat. So. First things first, get rid of that all day buffet, right? And that is not how a cat would normally eat in the wild and it's not going to help their metabolism or their digestion to just have food out all of the time. Feeding them on a schedule, usually three times a day, is going to be best for them. And that's gonna be around dawn, around dusk, and then sometimes your kitties will want a treat around lunchtime as well. Now, I do wanna throw this in here because we are talking about how we're feeding our cats. I do not ever recommend feeding our cats out of or off of plastic containers. Plastic is porous, and that means that it can harbor bacteria. And not all bacteria is bad, however, plastics are not designed to be used forever. That's just, the long and short of it. And they do need to be changed out regularly. So if you are using plastic and you are changing them regularly, good for you. Um, but I would still say let's not use plastics because it can really cause a lot of dermatological issues with our cats. So if you've ever noticed your cat getting like bumps, or, you know, like red bumps or even pimples along their face or chin, that is most likely being caused by plastic uh, food or water bowls. So let's get rid of those and switch to a better material that isn't going to, it's not por that's not porous, right? So a glazed ceramic, for instance, glass, or even a stainless. Now, not all cats are going to love stainless because sometimes if it's not a really high quality stainless, it can have like a metallic flavor um, that it can give off to the food and water. If you get a really high quality food grade stainless, you probably won't have that issue. But if you've given your cat something stainless and they just don't want to eat off of it, then I would say stick with glass or a coated ceramic. So we talked about feeding at dawn, at dusk, and maybe a little snack at lunchtime. Let's also talk about how we're feeding at those times. So. I like to give my cats variety. Sometimes, and it depends on my cat as well, some of my cats, I I like to spread out their food a little bit more, especially if I'm giving them like a freeze-dried treat. I'm not gonna just give them a, a lump of their freeze-dried food right in front of them, right? I'm gonna spread it out and do like a little, they have to kind of scavenge and find it, right? Um, I have a blind cat and that's one of the ways that I provide enrichment to him. I do this for my dog as well, um, but for my dog, she isn't blind and I, you know, I can, I can make it more difficult for her, but for my blind cat, I will actually take some freeze-dried food and I will sprinkle it all in, you know, a three, to four foot radius around him and that way he has to he has to use his nose and he has to go around and sniff it all out and find it and he does a great job at this that's one way to provide enrichment at mealtime for your cat we also love the doc and phoebe's feeders there are two different kinds of feeders there's the hunting feeders that you can use with dry or freeze-dried raw food 
And then they have the wet feeders, which are very similar to slow feeders or wet feeders that you can get for dogs. Now, my cats absolutely love these, and here are some clips of them using their wet feeders from Doc and Phoebe's. I also recently gifted the Doc and Phoebe's, both the hunting feeders and the wet feeders, to my sister, and I did an ultimate <laughs> cat lady gift video guide uh, for you guys. If you haven't seen that, I will link it in the description below so you can check that out as well. And just as a reminder, everything that I talk about in today's video, I will link in the description box for you. So next, let's talk about raising your food, your cat's food, off of the ground a little bit. There are a lot of cats out there who have really been dealing with GI issues, upset stomachs, um, maybe scarf and barf, right? If your cat eats and then immediately throws up, that's an issue, even sometimes hairballs. And a lot of this is because your cat is eating off of the ground. It's not very natural um, for your cat. When they have a prey animal, they're, they're raised up a little bit off of the ground. And a lot of times we'll, we'll take their prey to a safer location, <laughs> maybe not um, in the middle of a, a, a yard or a field, right? Eating off of the ground, really low on the ground, your cat can develop digestive issues and it also can harm, it can, it can hurt, it can bother or irritate their neck and their spine. So raising their food off of the ground a little bit. Now one way that I have done this in the past is just by using cardboard boxes. Um, generally like the boxes that, canned food, that cat canned food comes in, they're like half boxes. I like those for raising their food uh, plates off of the ground just a little bit, but these cute feeders are absolutely adorable and I want to again thank the Amazon seller for sending them to me and providing the inspiration for this video. These are also linked down below. These are some really, really cute feeders and I want to show you how my cats use them. So like I said, we normally feed on flatter plates like this so we reduce whisker stress, but I wanted to give something a little different a try. So these ceramic cat bowls, um, you can get them on Amazon and they're actually lifted. So I haven't actually pulled these out. You gonna help me, Rome? You help me, buddy? Pull these out and get them washed. They are designed to lift off of the floor so your cat isn't like hunching over to get their food. So it's, you see the, the lifted design here? So I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get these out with one hand, but I'm gonna try. All right, so as you can see, and excuse my mess, they have these really cute designs on the back and they are lifted up off of the floor. The only thing is that they're, they may be, you know, hitting the whiskers. Though, I don't, you know, some cats may not mind it as much, but I do like the idea of getting them up off of the floor. This one, the black one, has the beautiful gold on it as well. So let's get them washed. Okay, so you can kind of see here with Romeo, I've got some towels that are propping up where I normally put his bowl. So, I <laughs> know buddy, you want your supper, don't you? Tonight instead, we will be using one of these bowls to prop up his food. So let's go ahead and get them fed because he is hungry, aren't you buddy? You hungry? You hungry, hungry boy? You sure are, okay. All right buddy, what do you think? What do you think, my buddy? <laughs> I can't see your eyes. Okay, you're eating out of it, and that's what counts. So, we've got one for Sissy, too. Is that okay, baby? Maybe, maybe it brings it up off the floor a little bit, huh? Okay, good job, good job. 
What do you boys think? Huh? What do you boys think? <laughs> you want to eat off the same plate? Good boys. How about you, my love bug? You getting your dinner on too? You sweet boy. So another thing that I want you to take into consideration when we're feeding our cats is that there is this thing called whisker stress and your cat's whiskers serve a lot of purposes. So if you have ever had your cat come to you asking for more food when they have just eaten, eaten what's in the center of the bowl and there's plenty of food around the edges, it is because your cat is dealing with whisker stress. So they can get easily to the food in the center of the bowl, but to be able to get to the food around the edges of a bowl, it, they're having to push in their whiskers. And that is very uncomfortable for your cat to do. And some cats, they'll, they'll go their whole lives and not have big issues with it, but most cats can have some pretty serious issues with this. And if you've ever had your cat come ask you for food when there was food in the bowl, this is the reason. So I actually never feed my cats out of bowls and their water bowls are large enough, they're wide enough that their whiskers are not going to hit the edges. So when I'm providing any sort of food or water dish to my cat, that is one of the big concerns that I have. If it is a bowl, is it wide enough that they can get in there and not their whiskers not touch the edges, and if not, then it needs to be flat. So when I feed my cats, if I'm not using any of the Doc and Phoebe's feeders, or, or if I'm not providing some other for, blah, 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 I can't talk, or if I'm not providing some other form of enrichment for my cat during mealtime, then I'm feeding them on a flat plate. That way, they can get to all of the food and not have any sort of whisker stress going on. So I hope you found this information useful and I do hope you check out all of the products that I talked about in this video because I use all of them and I think they are amazing. And again, thank you to the Amazon seller for sending us these very beautifully created and crafted ceramic bowls that are raised off of the ground for our kitties. If your cat is dealing with, with whisker stress, they may not be the absolute best option for you, but they can be used here and there, maybe not for every meal, and even just as a little side dish of water. I think they would be really cute sitting out. I like that they are raised off of the ground, and I hope you take a moment to check them out on Amazon. Thank you so much for being here with me in this video. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you're wondering about feeding your cat, if you're wondering about feeding your dog, if you're wondering about a product you're already using or a product you're considering using, let me know by commenting on this video down below this video. I can't wait to hear from you. Also, if you are one of those 2.0 pet parents that I know you are because you watched this video, then I invite you to join me on Patreon. The link is, it's the very first link in the description. You can also go to Patreon and search Jessica Fisher. I provide all new and exclusive pet parent content over there. And when my videos go live on YouTube, we have extensive discussions about them over on Patreon as well. So I do hope to see you over there. There are four different tiers to choose from, so I know you're gonna find one that works for you. I can't wait to see you over on Patreon. Again, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, and if you're not already subscribed, then go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Once you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell and select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me today, and I can't wait to see you guys in our next video. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.